You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. Johnson. Normally we have a voiceover, and he did that all live for us. So congrats to Jesse. Thank you so much for doing that. No problem, Mari. <laughs> and now uh, Jackie is my co-host on several former shows, including Real Housewives of New York. We just finished Keeping Up with Kardashians last night. And now, Jackie, are you ready to uh, break down Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? I am so ready, and now hearing Jesse's intro, I'm, like, even more pumped. There's so much to talk about, and uh, we have some housewife drama back to talk about, Mari, uh, after New York. I'm happy to have Beverly Hills, even under the circumstances, and I can't wait to talk about it. Yes, after hosting an entire season of Real Housewives of New York for After Buzz, Jackie and I are seasoned veterans now, and uh, we normally have our third co-host, Deidre Bayer, joining us. She cannot join us tonight, but she will be back with us next week. It was us three gals breaking down Roni every week, and now we'll be breaking down Roby. I don't know how to – it's R O R H O B H. I don't know how to say it as well as Roni. It doesn't really roll off the tongue, but it, we'll, we'll figure out our own ac- uh, acronym. It, it's <laughs> it's Robe. Robe. Yeah, I guess Robe. Huh. Yeah, Robe, you got to huh. put the at the <laughs> so, end. I, yeah, we got to, like, emphasize the, the H there. But um, I am so excited for this season. I have been waiting for it since last season uh, just to let all our fans know I'm originally from Beverly Hills. And so this show, I, I feel like I connect with more than the other Real Housewives franchises. You know, I know the places these women go to. I have some exclusive scoops and news for you ladies and for uh, all our listeners because I, I do have some insider connections. And so I can't wait to share all that exclusive scoop with you. But um, I don't mean to start off on a more somber tone, but obviously we have to because this season was preceded by the tragic suicide of Russell Armstrong, who was the husband of Taylor Armstrong, so they were going through a divorce. So, Jackie, first, let, let me get your thoughts on that beginning. So basically what happened was the first couple minutes of the show was almost like an interview among the castmates, a very frank conversation among all the castmates, the real housewives and the house husband, except for Taylor, discussing the suicide at Adrian's house. So, Jackie, what did you think of that conversation? Honestly, Mari, you know, I don't know what to expect from Bravo, uh, being that they feed off of drama. I was really looking to see how they would handle this situation and you know I was a little disappointed because I was I was looking to a, they said they were going to do some sort of public service announcement in the beginning and I guess was this considered the public service announcement because for me for such a serious topic and I don't at all blame Bravo or the cast members or even Taylor for his suicide I just don't think that this felt genuine and um, it felt like a continuation of these women trying to be dramatic the way they are on the show. And I just, for such a serious uh, situation, I just 
I would have much preferred something where they directly talk to the camera. It, you know, Taylor obviously is going through a hard time right now, but even for her to have directly said something to the camera, I mean, this, this the way they did this opening for me, I was a little disappointed in the way they handled that. I, am I the only one there? What did you think, Mari? Well, I do have to say, in addition to this kind of conversation among castmates, they were airing uh, suicide prevention ads, kind of like PSAs with a suicide prevention hotline uh, number during the commercial break. So they did have that, and they will continue to have that running throughout the whole season, I believe. And uh, just so our fans are aware, Jackie also has some kind of inside, some inside scoop on Bravo because she was a model on a one of the Project Runway seasons, and so I will be asking Jackie, you know, for her inside scoop on on Bravo and their decisions throughout it. So it's interesting to hear your opinion, Jackie. Just it sounds like you didn't think they handled it as appropriately as they could have. I think that for going with the original air date, this was the best they could have done. I think my qualm is the fact that they went with the original air date of September 5th, which is just weeks after this happened. If I were a Bravo exec, I would have probably pushed it later because it's very sensitive. Though I understand this is a hot topic right now and fans and people want to see it. They want to know what's going on. But if it were me, I would have pushed back the date to a later time, maybe when Taylor could address the issue, frankly, when she could come on and do it. Obviously, doing this, um, you know, cast conversation on August 29th was too early for her. So that was my qualm. But I think the way that they handled it, having decided to go with the original air date, I thought it was a very frank, open, and honest conversation. So you don't agree with me then? It didn't feel it didn't feel frank to me. Now, granted, I'm not. You know, they've only been around for one season, right? One season prior to this, so I'm not as in depth with these characters to know a true sense of what they're like. But for me, I just felt like it was almost about themselves sitting there. I mean, I know they were talking about Taylor, but it just didn't feel deep enough for me to to feel. Like they were really being supportive of her. I don't know. It just it just really rubbed me the wrong way. And I unfortunately I, I think you're right, Mari. It, it they definitely should have been more sensitive to Taylor and pushed it back. And I, I think that they were going for, you know, ratings off of this terrible, terrible tragedy. And I don't wanna pin Bravo on anything negative, but I just I I, I felt a cloud over this episode for me including this opening sequence. And I have to say, while I thought that parts of it were frank and honest when they discussed, you know, what were the signs? Was it the financial pressure or, you know, we didn't see any signs. It was a shock to us. And, you know, we have guilt about not seeing any signs and then kind of discussing their marriage a little bit. Lisa, I think, was very honest when she said she almost knew too much information about him to ever want to connect with him and how the things they, she had told them about their marriage was so heartbreaking. I thought all of that was very open and honest. The part where I thought it was kind of produced, neatly produced into a tight little package was after having that frank conversation, it was like, okay, let's show the rainbow at the end of the light and go on to, oh, Taylor needs our support more than ever. Life goes on. It has to. And that was kind of the dot, dot, dot. Kyle ended with that saying, life go on. It has to. And then you got the black screen saying these events were were depicted prior to the death of Russell Armstrong and then going into the episode. So I kind of thought that, like, last line and moving forward was a little too life is messier than that tragedy is messier than that so i think that kind of like neatly wrapping it up didn't fit what did you think exactly i think that's that's kind of where i'm coming from it was like just a little bit too neat and and like okay we're supposed to do this it was almost like they they knew they had to do something but they wanted to go ahead. They even possibly thought they were going to get even better ratings because of it. And it's just, again, that word that keeps popping in my brain is insensitive. And, um, you know, honestly, I felt uncomfortable watching moments with Taylor throughout this episode. 
and where maybe a month might a month later I might not have. So I just think I, I think it backfired on Bravo to to air it so soon, and I think you know it just came off as insensitive. And I thought it was kind of an odd decision to decide to go with the original air date only because they did very, very little promotion for the fact that the show was actually airing last night. There was very little promotion, which kind of reminded me of uh, one of the reasons Miami, Real Housewives of Miami didn't do well is because they pushed up that air date because they pushed back Real Housewives of New York to re-edit it and make it more dramatic, which, boy, it was. But uh, anyways... They did very little promotion from Miami, and a lot of people say that's one of the reasons Miami didn't do well. Obviously, I think Real Housewives of Beverly Hills will do well. It was their biggest franchise of all the Real Housewives in its first season, and obviously people know about it and want to watch, but I thought it was weird that they did no promotion for the fact that it was on, you know, at 9 p.m. yesterday, on a Monday night. You know, there was very little promotion for that. Yeah, and I think, you know, that's the thing. I think where I will come to Bravo's defense is I, I, I can see that they probably see how powerful this franchise is in Beverly Hills versus some other cities. And I know New York is very strong, and we obviously reported on that, Mari. But when you watch this episode, even in light of everything that's happened, there's good stuff here. It's really entertaining you might not agree with it you might not like this you know the the drama that comes about but you have to admit it's so damn entertaining and that's why i feel like if they would have handled it a little better they still would be just as successful and come off better as a network at you know on bravo's end of it but i'm not going to take away from them the fact that this episode was damn exciting and entertaining and i loved every second of the drama i mean i think that the drama, obviously we'll talk about this in predictions, it's going to get a lot crazier. I feel like the pacing on this episode was a little off and not natural, and that is because they re-edited it, and I have in our news and gossip some information about what exactly they did edit out um, due to Russ Armstrong's suicide, and I have my own opinions about the way they edited it, and I'll share that um, you know, throughout the show. But I feel like the pacing was a little bit off, and obviously it's going to be dramatic, but I think the rest of the episodes after this first one, this is kind of that awkward first one, and the rest of the episodes is when the drama is really going to go down with these ladies. But let's just get right into the episode. Um, one thing I will say that I think that they edited out, I don't know if you noticed this, Jackie, but each of the women before the dinner party, which was kind of like the main arc of the episode, had kind of almost a status update as to what's going on with their life and what has gone on with their life since season one. And we'll talk about each of those. But Taylor was the only one who didn't have that update. Her first introduction into the episode was the shopping trip with Kyle, where they're talking about Lisa and Cedric and that friendship. She never had... Uh, okay, this is where my life's at right now, and that is, I, I have some news about what exactly was edited out, but that definitely, her little status update was definitely edited out. Did you, did you pick up on that? Absolutely, and, and that's typical Bravo style to sort of do that intro where they give you that little background on each person, and you're right, uh, it actually was noticeable to me when Taylor, it was literally like she came in out of nowhere and was like, oh yeah. my gosh, I just left her. You know, so you're right. It, it jumped out at you because it wasn't that soft intro of I've been doing this and I'm doing fine. And, you know, so absolutely I, I could see why that would have happened, obviously, but it was very noticeable. You're right. Yeah, and uh, for our fans, stay tuned. I'll have specifics of what that status update would have entailed had it been kept in. But um, let's get into just the other women's status updates. Lisa, uh, I'm excited for this season because her soon-to-be son-in-law asked for her daughter's hand in marriage, or he asked for Ken's approval. So I'm hoping that we're seeing wedding planning going on this season. That would be awesome. So so what did you think of him asking for um, Pandora's hand in marriage or asking asking Ken for her for his approval. 
I, I don't know if it's because we're coming off of the proposal from Kardashians last night, but I'm in like this wedding happy mood, and I love this storyline, and I and I know they hinted to it throughout the uh, previews for the upcoming episodes, but this is actually one storyline that I really want to follow, and I think he definitely set it up the right way by asking the dad. I mean, you that's just a must. If you respect her at all, you have to ask the dad. So... Um, it was definitely starting things off on the right foot for what I hope to be what I hope to be a big storyline because I who doesn't like watching wedding planning I mean come on so um, I think I think it's exciting and I have to admit a little disclaimer for all of our fans listening at least in season one Lisa Vanderpump was by far hands down my favorite character I think she's hysterical I think she's honest but in the best way and I think that Ken is hysterical, jiggy, everything. I love them. I love them as a couple. I love them as individual people. So I, you know, I had a love fest kind of for Sonia Morgan, you know, for Real Hot of New York. And so Lisa is my Sonia when it comes to Beverly Hills. And so I think she's hysterical, and I would love to see her planning a wedding. Oh, my gosh. Mari, you're not going to like this, but I see Lisa as my Luann. I feel like no. <gasps> yes. Okay. Can I just say to all of our fans, Luann was my most hated. While Sonia in Real Housewives of New York was my favorite week to week, Luann was the woman I hated the most. So the fact that you're saying that to me, Jackie, is like blasphemy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But let me just explain. Let me explain. What I do mean by that is, for me, and I always said this about Luann is I love the bitch factor as a viewer, but I, she's the one I would hate the most if I were actually in the group. So that's the only reason I compare her and call her my Luann. So it's not exactly the same thing, but uh, I have a feeling we're going to have a few disagreements on Lisa this season. I think you're thinking that because of, and Kyle even said this during the episode, that because you talk in a British accent, you come off as more condescending. And so maybe that's what you're picking up on, because Luann is the definition of condescending. Lisa's not condescending. I understand how people could think that, but she really is not. She is the most kind-hearted, like, funniest person ever, in my opinion. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. I do have to disagree. She does come off as condescending to me. Now, I'm, of course, a total East Coast girl over here, so I know you're East Coast, West Coast, but, you know, more West Coast than I am. So maybe I'm missing it, and maybe it's the British thing. I don't know, but we'll figure it out. And I'm going to be upfront and honest with you, Mari. I'm sorry, even if it hurts. <laughs> And I also have to uh, tell our fans that one reason I also love Lisa so much is because her restaurant in Beverly Hills, Villa Blanc, uh, is a restaurant that my family and I often go to for lunch and dinner, and I absolutely love the food there. And um, not only is Lisa great on the television show, but also off as well. Uh, her and my mom kind of st struck up a friendship over their mutual love of their own dogs. Obviously, Lisa has Jakey. We have... Um, a massive standard poodle, a white poodle named Louie, and uh, Lisa helped my mom to devise a plan to allow Louie to sit outside at the restaurants in Beverly Hills. She gave her some tips on how to, like, let your dog sit in restaurants outside. And uh, I love Lisa. I love the LeBlanc. So I just have to throw that out there. <laughs> yeah, see, your roots go deeper than mine. So, uh, you know, hopefully I'll, I'll get to a good place with Lisa so all can be well here on AfterBuzz. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get into the next status update, which is Kim and Kyle, which I thought was really, really sad. And before we get into this, I wanted to share a little a little more exclusive scoop. Uh, Kyle, at the beginning of her status update, said that she was selling her house and moving to a bigger home. My sister actually toured Kyle's home because she's in the process of looking for a home and hasn't found one yet. But one of the homes she looked at was Kyle's, and she said Kyle is uh, a very nice woman, beautiful home. Um, and so that, that was interesting. But to get back to their relationship, it's very interesting because I'm not sure about this, but very rarely on these types of shows do two sisters or, you know, siblings go on the show together like that. And so 
it's heartbreaking to me that Kim and Kyle's relationship is at the point it's at. Obviously, last season in the finale, they went to blows over the fact that Kyle thinks Kyle thought Kim was an alcoholic, and Kyle didn't want to support her after anymore. Basically, she felt that she had to watch over Kim after their mother died, even though she's the younger one. She felt she had to watch over her, and she was like, you know, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. And, you know, in the reunion, it was awkward, too. I thought by the time that they were filming season two, everything would be okay. I mean, they're sisters, and they were close. And so the fact that Kyle is calling her, is calling him, and Kim is ignoring her phone calls, that they've barely seen each other, that seeing each other at the dinner party was one of the rare times they've even seen each other in months, to me is incredibly sad. It's sad, and it's also, uh, let me just throw this out there, I love the scoop um, that your sister toured Kyle's home, because I need to throw it out there, Mari, that for me... Kyle is actually my Sonia in the way that she sort of does a few things in a different way than Sonia where she's a little tougher at times and a little more blunt possibly is a good word for her. But I'm, I love that scoop on your sister because I can tell that Kyle's a good person. And the, I give her passes the same way I gave Sonia passes during New York. She gets a pass for me. So she's kind of like my Sonia, even though their personalities are completely different. And I really like Kyle. And I think it's sad, and I think Kim is a mess, in my opinion. I just think she's a mess. I think Kyle is tough. She's strong. I believe that she's taken care of her throughout the whole, you know, tragedy of their mother. And I would believe that because Kyle, to me, is so strong. Kim's a mess. And you're right, it's totally sad, but I think Kim's the one who's having a hard time when I don't really, from what from what I've seen, I don't know that why she's, she's the one having such a hard time. I mean, the alcohol thing possibly, but is it is she wrong? I don't know if Kyla was so wrong about that, but, you know, it, we saw her daughter come on and say how complicated it is for her, and you're right, it is it is sad. But I think Kim's just like a mess. I think it's Kim's fault. I mean, it's sad because Kyle, obviously, she said, like, she's not willing to, like, oh, she's, she is going to keep trying. She's the one who's calling. She's the one who's extending the olive branch, and Kim seems to be ignoring it. And she said it's because she's not ready. But when it comes to siblings, like, it's not a, like, a, like a friendship, like, I'm not ready to talk to you. Like, that is your sibling. You need to figure it out. You need to talk and, and figure it out. So... I almost hope that, you know, in the previews I saw of all the drama and all the fights this season, that they bond and reconnect over maybe their mutual having to fight off the other women because that's what it seemed like in the predictions, and we'll talk about that. But I hope that we don't see too many blow-ups again between these two sisters because I like them both, and, I, you know, Kyle has it together and Kim doesn't, but I like them both as people, and I hope that, you know, we'll... I always think drama, obviously, is so entertaining on Real Housewives. I hope, almost, that there isn't much drama between the two sisters. I hope so, too. And can I just add, on a fashion perspective, that Kim should never wear that Elvis suit again, and I can't believe people complimented that when she she walked into the dinner party. For me, that was like fashion, you know, that was a fashion tragedy right there. So I just had to throw that out there. But, uh... It's better. Maybe it's better than being in blue like all the other girls. I don't know. But for me, that was the uh, worst dress of the episode. Oh, my God. So funny. You know what we're going to have to do a couple episodes in once we have enough fashion? We should do a whole special segment on, like, each of the ladies' fashion. <laughs> oh, I love that. Definitely. And now, while I'm hoping that there isn't much drama between Kyle and Kim, what I'm, like, dying to see in terms of drama is Camille. Because Camille... Was, is my Luann. Camille is the woman I hated most on season one. She was despicable, like just totally. And so her status update was her turning a new leaf post Kelsey Grammer. And like, I, I think people are afraid to like say mean things about her almost just because she, you know, had this divorce with Kelsey. And I do feel for her, obviously, you know, when she was talking about how the girlfriend 
took all of her clothes out of her bedroom in her Hamptons home, you know, and that she doesn't even speak to Kelsey except for through a mediator every once in a while to talk about kids. That whole thing is sad, and I feel bad for her. But, and I get, you know, she's on her own now. She's going through a new journey. She has her friend, Dee Dee. But I am just waiting for Big Sheet Camille to come out. And she even mentioned at the end of the episode in the dinner party, she was like, for once, the drama doesn't involve me. But I am waiting for the drama to involve her, and I'm waiting for the Big Sheet Camille to come out and to get her claws out. <laughs> Mari, I think you and I are differing on every character tonight because I like Camille. I, I mean, I get last season she might have been despicable, but you know what? With these housewives, not even season to season, episode to episode, minute to minute, I love these girls and then I hate them. And so whatever happened in the past, I'm over it because you know what? I loved her this, this episode and I hope she stays on a good path with me because, you know, I, I'll take her bitchy too, but uh, on this episode, I actually really thought Camille came off well and I felt for her uh, with the Kelsey drama and, you know, donating the shoes and um, you know, even when she's bitchy, I like her. I like Camille. See, I think you're too quick to forgive and forget when it comes to Camille, whereas I I don't trust it. I don't believe it. I think she's hiding something. I think she's being nice right now, but I think that there's there's more to come with this. There has to be, because Camille was so evil last season. There's, there has to be more. She's She's hiding it. <laughs> She might be, she might be, but, you know, I don't know. I like her right now. That's all I'm going to say. And as for Adrian, her status update was basically bickering with Paul, which let's get into that later on when we talk about the dinner party. But I want to talk about the kind of gaping hole in the status updates, which was Taylor. We said her first introduction this episode was going shopping with Kyle. It was like Kyle showed up at Therese, which, by the way, I love that designer. And Taylor just kind of runs through the door, says something like, oh, my God, I just ran into Cedric. And then they all get into, you know, the awkward triangle of Lisa, Taylor, and Kyle. Kyle and Lisa were originally very close friends. And then Taylor and Kyle became close during season one. And Lisa was always a little bit jealous of that. And that was, you know, an underlying storyline last season. It obviously seems like it's going to be a major one this season. But, again, it was like they skimmed over everything they would have normally done with Taylor and went right into a storyline that, like, you know, has nothing at all to do with Russell, and that was her first introduction. So so what did you, you think of that? Well, it just kind of made it a little tough to, to gauge Taylor compared to all the other ladies. But, you know, I actually, and this is really independent of the Russell situation and the suicide and everything, I'm looking at it just as the episode. Because I actually, as much as, of course, we have to be aware of what's going on, it, the whole tragedy hasn't really weighed my opinion on my opinion of Taylor besides what I've seen on the episodes and I am rooting for Taylor I like Taylor I like that she is a little weak and tries to speak her mind and it doesn't always go well and you know like she's always kind of like trying to gain her footing in the midst of all these other catty bitchy women and I I actually I'm all for Taylor I'm and I don't think it's even because of the suicide and all that. I really just, I root for her as a character. And you know I love Kyle, so I guess that's why I have this sort of issue with Lisa. And uh, so I'm sorry, Mari. I hope that changes for our sake here at, <laughs> on After Buzz. The thing with Taylor is, you know, we're so frank about our opinion of the other wives. And, you know, I like Lisa. I hate, you know, whatever. I, like, feel awkward even saying, what my opinion has been of Taylor. Now, obviously, I don't know, and I'm trying to figure it out. I will say, in the past, before this happened, in season one, I really liked her. I thought, um, you know, despite the extravagant birthday party for Kennedy, which, you know, a lot of people criticized, I liked her. I thought, um, you know, I thought her vulnerability, I, I liked her. I thought she was nice, and she always would step in to kind of, like, qualm the fights between people and, um, you know, calm everything down, and I liked her. Then, after the season 
aired, I found out, which a lot of fans know this um, by now, she, uh, like, changed her name, like, four times. Her real name is Shayna Ford, and then she changed it to Taylor Ford, and she's, like, from the Midwest and kind of seen, which none of those things are big deals. That's fine. Change her name, move to Beverly Hills. But it was almost, in the things I read, it was presented almost as she was, like, a gold digger or trying to, like, you know, reinvent herself and become Miss Beverly Hills Housewife. So when I heard that, my view of her and her true intentions changed. But at this point where it stands right now, I, I, I feel awkward even, like, discussing my opinion of her. And you know what? I, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know where, where me and Taylor stand right now. Yeah, see, that's the thing. I mean, that's why I think this is awkward. I, I really feel like Bravo shot themselves in the foot a little bit by rushing this because here we are. You know, this is our what we're here to do is critique, and we feel uncomfortable. I just think there was an uncomfortable air throughout the whole episode, any moment that Taylor was on screen, and I just think that time would have healed that, and I Again, I just need to say it again. I think Bravo should have waited to air this, but so so it goes. And so let's talk about the main story arc this episode, which was Adrian's dinner party. Um, behind or almost equaling Lisa, I love Adrian. I think she's hysterical, even though Lisa and Adrian, well, I guess, and Camille because of Kelsey, but Lisa and Adrian are by far the wealthiest on the show, and Adrian is the wealthiest. She, I think is very down to earth. She all last season never got involved in the drama, always tried to stop it. I think she has a kind heart and I like her and I think she's funny. And I always thought last season that Adrian and Paul's bickering was very funny and in the reunion they did a whole little special segment on them bickering back and forth and I thought it was hysterical. Which normally I think it's funny, but I thought them bickering in front of their guests took it too far. I mean, they were uncomfortable. Did you pick up on that? Absolutely. I made, you know, huge stars in my notes, like weird, uncomfortable, awkward um, throughout the whole dinner party because I think I think that kind of, I, I can relate to that, not personally, but just like I feel like, don't you know how that kind of goes sometimes, Mari, where like a couple, like it, it goes just a little bit too far to the point of uncomfortable. I feel like they're, I, I'm familiar with this bickering kind of style and it's like, all of a sudden it goes from being funny to, to awkward. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, I, it's funny to a point, but it, it almost, and maybe it's in light yet again of, of what happened with, you know, from here on out um, with the other couples and, and Taylor and everything at the table. But uh, it just felt uncomfortable rather than funny. Yeah, I mean, normally I think it's funny, and in the beginning when they were kind of doing the status update, I thought it was funny that they were fighting over food, drinks, him golfing, what he's wearing, everything, etc., whatever. But at the dinner table, it got awkward real fast, because she was kind of yelling at him. She was like, don't be rude. You're being rude. You're condescending. I'm not kidding. Stop it. And it was like the whole thing. You don't do that in front of guests, which I was very surprised, because normally Adrian is so calm and she even said like I want everyone to be on their best behavior this is not going to be another dinner party from hell and she almost kind of made it hell for her guests because she she took it too far I think he he wasn't even that bad she's the one who took it too far even though she's my favorite or one of my favorites she took it too far here definitely I I totally agree but I will say that Paul and Adrian Spickering obviously set up the conversation that was the main drama of the episode, which was Ken criticizing the fact that Taylor is in marriage therapy. And I, I'll i share some scoop. Part of this was edited out. So we did not see the full conversation because part of it due to Russell's suicide was edited out. But for the most part, it was intact. I mean, basically... Paul asked Taylor how her marriage is going, how her and Russell are, because obviously last season they ended off on a bad note. They were leaving for Cabo to, like, figure out their marriage. And um, she basically said, 
we're working on things. I'm knee deep in psychotherapy. It's been good for me um, because I'm finding my voice. And even though he was resistant at first, he's participating. And, you know, all the other women um, kind of gave their two cents. Camille said she thought it was admirable that they're in therapy. But she never had the chance to do that with Kelsey. Kim said, you know, do whatever you have to to save your marriage, especially if you have a child. I tend to be in that camp. I think that therapy is totally healthy. I think it's good for a marriage. And Adrian mentioned how she, before she even married Paul, they had to do therapy. I think that can be normal. So I totally am in that boat. But everyone has a right to their own opinion. And so Ken normally is like the nicest, quietest guy. So I was surprised by him when he said, you know, if I had to go to a therapist to make my marriage better, I would feel weak. I think you should sort it out yourself. What did you think of his comments? I didn't think they were that bad. You know, everyone has a right to their own opinion. So what did you think, Jackie? The thing is, is watching it now, under the circumstances, it was so, it seemed so awful of Ken, right? But the thing is, is had this tragedy not happened, I would definitely be sitting here saying, okay, so he made one comment. I think she got a little dramatic. I think it was insensitive. Um, I don't know if it was necessarily offensive, but um, everybody can agree to disagree. Uh, I think Taylor had a right to get upset. But here I am. I can't help but judge Ken on an even stronger level, even though we know it was Totally before all of this happened, I still can't help myself. I found myself judging him on a deeper level. I just can't get over that. But if it were normal circumstances, I would say it, was, it wasn't it was that bad. And I thought Lisa was very diplomatic here because she stood up for Ken, but she didn't stand up for his opinion. She never said, oh, I agree, I don't think therapy is a good idea. She never said her opinion on it. So she she stood up for him saying he has a right to his own opinion, which I agree for, with that. So Lisa, I think, was very di- diplomatic, because obviously in Real Housewives of New York, we saw a lot of awkwardness when Simon would say things that would make the housewives uncomfortable, and Alex would always totally come to his defense 100%. Lisa was diplom- more diplomatic about it. She came to his defense and saying, you know, he has a right to his opinion. If you don't agree with that, then that's you. He has a right to his opinion. But she never said, oh, I totally agree with him. Therapy's wrong. You know, so she handled that diplomatically, I thought. Yeah, I mean, I think she handled it, I, I don't know. I mean, I think no matter what, it was insensitive. Knowing that she was, and now knowing what happened, obviously she was not in a good place. Um, and if they were on any kind of level where they knew that she was not in a good place, um, it's just there was no need for him to say it. I do think he was wrong, but I do think he's entitled to his opinion. I don't think he should have shared it, though, at that point, either way. Uh, But Lisa, yeah, I was fine with the way Lisa handled it, but I, I just don't think there was any reason for him to say it regardless. And I will say, you know, I think everyone's eyes were on Taylor, and I just felt really bad for her. I mean, Ken's co- it's almost an showing or proving how weak, or how, not weak, how vulnerable she is at this point that Ken's comment wasn't all that bad, yet it set her off into an emotional breakdown while she was crying. And I um, want to share another little scoop. Around the same time that this was filmed, which um, I believe was in the winter, um, my brother was in an airport coming back from the Sundance Film Festival, as was Taylor and her husband, and he walked by them. And from his opinion, he seemed to think that they were, like, fighting and and that it was very awkward between them, um, you know, sitting in the airport lounge. So that was his personal opinion. But, you know, you can tell she's awkward. She you know, cried almost at the drop of a hat, and I felt really bad for her. And, you know, I love that Kyle came to, you know, comfort her. And, you know, I don't know. I just I felt really, really bad for her. I think, you know, I think with the with – the, you said they edited this, edited this, Mari, and I think you saying that made it a little more clear to me why I found the scene you, – you know, you mentioned the pacing – 
I found the pacing of this moment to be a little off, like something sort of skipped out or, or whatnot, um, because it all kind of, like, just happened, and then she came back, and I don't know. I just I don't think it flowed right. I feel like there were a few more lines there that I would have liked to have heard. Um, but, you know, she's super sensitive and right. You can only feel bad for her, and almost I almost want to say Ken was probably like, that typical guy, like, oh, no, what did I say? Like, oops, you know, sort of like a guy moment. So um, kind of chalk it up to that. But no matter what, you you can't help but feel bad for Taylor. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ken and Lisa did say some more kind of now, in the light of everything that happened, insensitive comments, not to Taylor's face, but in the interviews. And so I'll share those in news and gossip. Those were cut out. But before we do get to that news and gossip, I wanted to ask your opinion of what you thought of Lisa kind of obviously making up an excuse that she had to leave early and catch a flight, even though she lives right across the street from Adrian. They like literally live across the street from each other. She obviously did that because she felt uncomfortable with Kyle and Taylor, and I obviously that's going to be a big storyline this season is Kyle, Taylor, and Lisa and their friendship. What did you think of her, you know, kind of getting up there? I thought that was like a lame, a lame excuse. Um, you know, it, it's like almost being caught in some kind, not that she was caught in a lie, but it's like, you're right. She had to walk two steps. So, um, you know, I, I thought it was kind of lame and I'm, I'm looking to see what happens, this sort of triangle. But what I will say is that I love, I'm backtracking a second here because I, I love when Taylor said, um, you're walking around with a dog dressed in clothes, like what the hell is wrong with these people? <laughs> Whatever that line was, I love that from Taylor. And, um, yeah, I guess I'll, we'll, we'll see how this unfolds in this triangle of lace here. Definitely. So we have a lot of exclusives coming up in our news and gossip segment, so let's get to a commercial break so we can get right to that. Want to find out what the after buzz is about? Janice is a drama queen. This yeah. is the divide that is going to carry the series. Give us a call. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. This television, and they want it to be as dramatic as possible. I mean, it's Shakespearean. Like you never know what goes on behind closed doors. Find out why After Buzz TV is the number one source for after show content. Now, in the eyes of Jimmy... Nucky is a villain. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. Four, two, four, two, I mean, who would you guys rather hear that from? Your husband or your best friend? <laughs> the wig! The wig oh, will come out. That wig. When the TV show is over, get your after buzz on. Okay, so Wanna Jesse, in addition to uh, doing buzz? the news and gossip music, will you also cue the exclusive uh, sound? Because I have a big exclusive. After Buzz TV exclusive. <laughs> Thank you for that, Jesse. Uh, our DJ Jesse Kennedy there, who did the live intro for us and has been out the control throughout the episode, uh, throughout our show. So my exclusive soup. Which none of the other media have reported this yet. So After Buzz would be the first to report this. And I know this for a fact. I cannot reveal my sources, but I know for a fact that Russell Armstrong's family is looking to sue Taylor for causing Russell's death. They After are Buzz TV to sue exclusive. Her, her being his current wife, because they had not yet been divorced, for causing his suicide. So. There could be some courtroom drama. I don't know what's going to happen with it, but they are looking to sue her right now. So um, there's going to be a lot of tension with that family. You know, there was already tension just between their funeral arrangements. She um, took half of his cremations, and in the other half was sent to Texas to be with his family. But there's going to be a lot of drama, and I just, you know, I feel bad. Even even in death, he cannot rest in peace. See, this is, this, and that's a great exclusive scoop, by the way. Sorry. Um, I love that you're connected in this world here. Um, but I, this is just a perfect example of when it's very hard 
be in a public spotlight uh, through such a matter that's just so private and uh, respected. Um, you know, like, it, I have a feeling whatever goes on with this uh, inclination that there might be some, some law involved and suing and all that, um, you know it's going to be put up in the media. And uh, it's just, it's sad. Yeah, so we'll have to see how that unfolds. It's all very tragic, though, and it's almost awkward talking about that drama. But um, let's discuss, I was alluding to this throughout the show, what the changes were to the episode. So a different version of the premiere was sent out to critics earlier this summer, and while the changes weren't drastic, there were some changes. Basically, Gone from the Hour was a segment that had Taylor and friends in a sexy lingerie shop discussing her relationship with Russell and saying she hoped to re-spark some int- intimacy between them. I'm guessing that would have been the setup for her own status update. And then also cut were some thoughtless comments by Lisa and Ken about what they thought was, quote, Taylor's ability to manufacture emotion. So that obviously would have been in the interview segment during that whole dinner party scene. So those were the two things cut out. Ooh. Yeah, that's, that's tough. I mean, I think it's great that those were cut out, but at the same time, I think the dinner scene was still pretty awkward, so I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if it was worth them cutting this out, but I think no matter what, unless you cut Taylor out of the show, it's going to be awkward. And I don't see why they would have kept the dinner scene in, yet cut out the lingerie shop scene, because that doesn't seem that bad to me. If anything, it would have been better to at least have some sort of update on her before they just blindly introduced her. And it sounds like she was discussing pretty much the same subject matter in the lingerie shop as she was at the dinner party. Right. I mean, if you can include the dinner scene, you can, in my opinion, it sounds like those, you know... It might have saved space for Lisa and Ken, but as far as the viewer being able to handle it, um, I think we saw it right there at the dinner party. So these people, in my opinion, could have been worse than that. And uh, finally, in my final piece of news and gossip, I have to bring back our old favorites through Housewives of New York. They have each uh, commented on Russell Armstrong's suicide. Ramona said, I think it's very tragic, but I don't think the reality show is to blame for his unfortunate death. I think he had problems, and it's sad when someone has so many problems. They feel the only way they can eliminate their pain is by taking their life. Uh, Kelly kind of echoed the same sentiment, saying, I would never blame it on the show. You don't know what happens behind closed doors, and no one can judge. It's no one's job to do that. A lot of people speculate. Meanwhile, Sonia and Alex didn't say much. Sonia said her heart goes out to Taylor, but that sometimes being helpful is just staying out of her business, which I think is probably the best thing to do. Obviously, Sonia knows because when she went through the bankruptcy, she just wanted people to stay out of her business. And Alex said, um, basically, when they asked her if she, you know, called up Taylor or comforted her, she said, we did what we did privately, and that's that. So she just didn't even want to talk about it at all. Yeah, I mean, I think the most important thing that I take from that, um, I like that they were, Sonia and Alex, uh, seemed very respectful. And um, I agree with Ramona that I don't think anybody is to blame. Um, I think the number one thing that I think about a situation like this, it is so tragic. Um, and I don't think anybody should feel that it was their responsibility or their fault. Um, I think that's really a a challenge in in a situation like this and with the media um, calling people out it might make it harder for somebody like Taylor but um, no matter what I blame anybody uh, for for this situation and um, that's your news and gossip for this week we'll be doing this every week and hopefully I'll have some more exclusive news and gossip throughout the season uh, but let's get into our predictions. We saw a lengthy season preview of what's to come. Now, so, Jesse, we please cue our predictions music. Predictions. So, for our first-time listeners who are Real Housewives of Beverly Hills fans, uh, I'm always 
weirded out by the eerie music, the futuristic music, but now I've uh, gotten used to it. So um, let's get into our prediction. I predict, and I've been saying this, that obviously Kyle, Taylor, and Lisa and their friendship will be a major storyline. It looks like uh, Lisa and Kyle have a blow-up. It also looks like Taylor and Kyle had a blow-up as well, and Camille and Kyle had a blow-up, which I've been waiting for that because they were the you know nemeses of last season. Uh, the drama I'm most excited for out of all those, though, is Kyle and Brandy Glanville's blow-up. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but Brandy Glanville is Eddie Cibrian's ex-wife. She is a woman Eddie left Leanne Ryan, left left to go marry Leanne Rhymes. So I heard she's a bitch. I heard that her and Kyle go head to head, and I can't wait for that. So those are my predictions. Uh, Jackie, what are yours? I absolutely can't wait for the Brandy Glanville um, whole storyline and. You know, I think if the previews show us anything, um, it's don't divorce or do anything to a woman that's on a reality show because <laughs> they have a huge platform to make you look really bad. And um, so I, out of everything, cannot wait to see Brandy. Well, that is it for our very first After Buzz TV show for the first episode of the second season of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I will be in studio in L.A. next week, so we will be having a video podcast. Jackie, are you going to be in L.A. Tuesday night? Oh, I'm just be missing you. I'm getting there Wednesday. Perfect. Well, we will be with each other throughout uh, next week for our other shows, uh, so you'll have to catch those, too. But uh, Tuesday night, same time, same place, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific time. Jackie will be joining us by phone. Deidre and I will be in studio in L.A. And hopefully we'll have some guests and some exclusive scoops. So thank you for joining us, and have a good night, everyone. Ladies, before you guys leave, I just want to put this out there, and I think we need to make what I'm about to say happen. But since both of you guys are in New York... October 1st, as we announced, actually right after New York, uh, Real Housewives of New York went off, they released that the Housewives were going to be going on tour. I think since you two are in New York, October 1st, I think you should go to New Jersey, and I think you should go go to the event, because I think it's going to be amazing. They're only making three stops, and I believe Countess Luann will be performing. And I, you know what? I've yeah. heard about this because my sister-in-law is a huge Real Housewives fan, and she told me not only is there a tour, but you can buy a certain like special VIP pass to meet them, and it's like a hundred and seventy-five dollars. It's, it's a hefty price, but how hysterical is that? Yes. So I don't know. I think we might be able to find some real AfterBuzz TV exclusives uh, at one of these events. So, um, Jackie, are you in? I'm in. I'll be there. I mean, if Luann's performing, then that's it. I'll be there. <laughs> All right, ladies. Well, thank okay, you. Okay, great. So, uh, great idea, Jesse. Hopefully, we'll do that October 1st. But before that, we will be having next week's episode on Tuesday. So, uh, thank you for listening, everyone. From producers Kevin Undergaro and Phil Svitek, engineer DJ Jesse Janity, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. If you have questions or comments, be sure to buzz us at info at AfterBuzzTV.com. And you can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter by searching for AfterBuzz TV. Uh, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.